And this is the last week of a thir- three-part series that I've started called Sozo. Everybody say Sozo. And I just need to bring you up to speed if you haven't been here. Sozo is the Greek word used in the Bible for salvation, but it's also used for healing. It's also used when, um, when the Bible translates it sometimes to wholeness. Go and be whole, or your faith has made you whole, or your faith has made you healed. 110 times in scripture, uh, in the King James, we see this word sozo come up. And 93 of those times are salvation. And what the whole premise of the series is, is that your wholeness and your healing is all wrapped up in sozo. It's wrapped up in salvation. It's wrapped up in the fact that you said yes to Jesus. When you prayed that prayer and you said, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. And you made a declaration and you gave your life to him and you were saved. You weren't just saved. It wasn't just a ticket to heaven, but you were healed. You were whole. God restored you. God brings back everything that the enemy has stolen. And when we come to the revelation that we are restored, we are whole, we are healed under salvation, things begin to change. And it, what it also determines is, is that we do not rely on ourselves. We do not rely on some magic spell to see miracles. We do not rely on, um, if I pray hard enough and I sweat, then something is going to happen and God is going to move. But we rely on Jesus alone because in Jesus our sal- we have our salvation. We have sozo. And last week we talked about the, the title of the message was get out of the way. Say get out of the way. I just wanted to let you doing that again because I know you like saying it. Get out of the way. Um, and I'm giving you permission to say it because, um, because I know you want to say it when somebody pulls out in front of you at the store or somebody walks slowly in front of your car when you're trying to park your car at Ikea and you're just trying to get there and you know this is an all-day affair going to Ikea just to get a little um, wicker stool. You know what I'm talking about? Like, this is personal to me. And somebody is walking in front of you with their mattress. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just get to the side. And if you're one of those people, I'm praying for you now, okay? Walk on the side so that people can pass. Get out of the way. We talked about getting out of the way because the only one where we find sozo in, we find salvation, healing, wholeness in is Jesus. And so often we get in the way of what Jesus wants to do. So just get out of the way. And that's what, that's my prayer this morning, even for myself, that I, only I'm a vessel. I'm just a vessel for what God wants to do. I'm a vessel for what um, he wants to do, that I'm just going to try my best today in communication to get out of the way. Amen. Mark chapter 10. Let's go to God's word. Mark chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 46. This is a story about a blind man named Bartimaeus. Verse 46 says this, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man named Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging, say begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Turn to somebody next to me, next to you and say, you can't shut me up. I'm just giving you permission to say things to your neighbor that you've been wanting to say for a while. When I was a youth pastor, we, we made t-shirts that said, you can't shut me up, you know? And they really loved that. It wasn't this verse. It was actually based out of um, another verse. He shouted all the louder. Verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Verse 52, go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. That word healed there is the word sozo. Back to the series, sozo. Your faith has sozoed you. Your faith has made you healed, saved, whole, Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along 
the road. Father, today, we just thank you that your word does not return to you void. It accomplishes everything that you sent it to do. God, we're grateful that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I say today that you are the head of the church, that Sozo is wrapped up in you. God, there is nowhere else that we can find healing, that we can find wholeness, that we can find salvation other than you. I know for so many in this room, we've probably spent our life um, prior to meeting you, trying to find salvation in something else, trying to find healing in something else, trying to find wholeness in something else. But God, God, when we meet you, everything changes. When it becomes about you, everything changes. And today, God, I pray that we would be focused and zeroed in on the fact that you are Jesus, you are Lord, and Sozo is wrapped up in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I warned my kids if they weren't, if they weren't behaving while we were setting up church, I would, uh, I would use them as an illustration. I told them, Nathan, right? I told him I was going to use them as an illustration. I don't know. This is, this is my kids, okay? Um, I hope this doesn't mess up the sound. I'm just going to come to the back now because, um, because this is what my kids do in the car, in the Turon. I'm going to stay over here to the side. Thank you, Corona regulations, okay? And I, th- this is what my kids do, is they sit in the very back of the car, all the way in the back, and they, and they start shouting at me, Dad, I want water! And I'm driving, you know? I'm driving the car. I want water! Get me water! I'm like, I cannot give you water. Do you want me to pull over on the side of the road? Do you want me to put a tap in the ground and draw water from the ground to resi- so you can get water? Get me water and it, like it seems like everything I can do to try to rationalize and try to explain that I cannot give them water because I'm driving down the road and it'll only be five minutes before we get to the house they're going nuts or they say are we there yet are we there yet no we weren't there yet two seconds ago when you asked and we're not there now the two seconds later that you asked anybody can relate that's a parent in the room amen and 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 so sometimes i think this is what i want to preach i want to preach on the topic to you stop begging from the back stop begging from the back turn to your neighbor say stop begging from the back let me explain i think so many of us like my kids we we, 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 we want something, we want, we, we want God to do something, or we want attention, or we want somebody to look at us, or we want some problem to be solved in our life. And what we're doing is, is we're, we're begging in the back, and what I see in this man named Bartimaeus is, is that he wasn't, though, though he was a beggar, though he was sitting on the side of the road begging, something shifted in his spirit, and he said, oh no, I'm going to stop begging from the back. I'm going to stop begging on the side of the road, and I'm going to get up on my two feet, and I'm I'm going to go after Jesus with everything that I have. I'm going to, I'm going to go after him. Something clicked inside of his spirit where I think he realized that it's only in him I'm going to receive healing. It's only in him that I'm going to receive salvation. It's only in him that I'm going to receive wholeness. So I'm coming after Jesus. Stop begging in the back. And what we have to realize is that it's only in him. And when we beg in the back, we're trying to receive something from peers. We're trying to receive something from somebody else. We're trying to do it in our own strength. We're trying to do, a, we're trying to get something done in our own strength. We, 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 we can have a mentality that, man, if I do enough for God, then he will do something for me. If I pull the lever on the slot machine just right, then the sevens will come up. And seven is a heavenly number, so then maybe God will do something, amen? Like, if I just try hard enough, God will do something in my life. But what we need to realize is that it's all wrapped up in Jesus. And if we could have the mentality, the desperation that this man had, where he just said, you know what, I gotta get to him. I got to get to Jesus. I don't know how he's going to do it. Last week we talked about you got to get rid of your misled expectations. Jesus doesn't do it the same way every time. You have to get rid of those expectations. You just have to say it's about him and I'm coming to him. My expectation is in Jesus. My expectation is not in the miracle. My expectation is in the one who does the miracles. And in our life we have to stop trying to have our expectations in the miracle and have our expectations in the one who does the miracles. The Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. He's the head of the church. 
And guess what? We're the church. So he is our head. We are the bride of Christ. He is the head of church. But, but just hear me when I say this. I am afraid that for so long, the church, I'm talking about the capital C church, acts like a headless church. It acts like the headless horseman. You ever seen the headless horseman? He walks around like this on his horse with the, every now and then when it's convenient, he puts his head on, boo, you know, like that. We walk around like the headless horseman. And when it's convenient for us, he's the Lord of our life. We put the head on. But when it's not convenient for us, we take the head off and we become the headless church without Jesus at the center. And when Jesus becomes at the center, when Jesus becomes at his rightful place, when he becomes the head of the church, then we will see signs and wonders. We will see miracles. We will see these things because it is all wrapped up in him. Sozo. And I love, I love Bartimaeus. Me and Bartimaeus would have been friends because Bartimaeus was crazy. He had to be crazy. When they told him to stop talking, when they rebuked him, guess the Bible says he just screamed all the louder. That was my, that's my kids. Stop talking. No. You have to use reverse psychology. Hey, you should scream louder and then they'd be quiet. So, so with Bartimaeus, with Bartimaeus, they, he, he, he's, he's literally at the top of his lungs, Jesus. And then even the followers of Jesus rebuke him. Stop. Jesus is busy. He has a schedule to attend to. But no, 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 no. Bartimaeus, it says, he screamed all the louder. If you want to get to him, you've got to break through resistance because anytime there's a miracle, anytime God's going to do something in your life, there's going to be resistance. There's going to be resistance. See, for us, it could be like this. Sometimes we just chalk it up to this. Our response to the resistance is what matters because sometimes, sometimes, God has given us an open door, but it's just cracked and we feel like the interview went bad and they didn't call us back or maybe that venue didn't open up or we've been praying for that outcome for so long, but nothing really took place. I, I don't see it. Oh, and then we say things like, well, it must not be God. If it didn't happen, it must not be God. You know, uh, it, the, the door didn't quite open, so God must be shutting that door. You know what I'm saying? You said that, I've said that. We, we just chalk up, we, we just say, we, we, we said a prayer, we asked a question and then the door shut and then, and then all of a sudden, well, that must not be God. We'll move on to something else. You know, I had, a, I had a believer one time who was a billionaire sit down with me and my pastor and he told us, he said, listen, this man had made a business for himself and he gave more money to the church to start campus and start things than, than, than I can even count. And so he, he, he was telling us, we were just asking questions. He said, listen, sometimes people don't, don't get it. People don't understand. Sometimes, sometimes doors aren't going to fling wide open for you. Sometimes you got to kick them down. Sometimes you got to come at that thing and say, boom, I'm here. You got to come after that thing and kick it down because sometimes there's going to be resistance. Actually, this, can I tell you this? When there's resistance, maybe it's a sign that you're on the right journey. Do you think the devil's going to resist you if you're heading to hell? If you're, if, you're, if you're off course, you think the devil's going to resist you? No. Welcome. <laughs> Coming right along. This way, sir. No, but when you face resistance, when you face something pushing back against you, maybe that's a sign that you need to push a little bit harder, that you need to come a little bit faster. The moment that somebody rebukes you and says, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you raising your voice, Bartimaeus? Oh, and then maybe you just need to shout even louder. Can I get a church to say amen this morning? I just need to know it's okay or, or go home or something. I don't know, say something. See, see, we see it, we see it throughout scripture. We see this, this resistance come, but we see people breaking through the resistance. We read it two weeks ago when the woman who had the issue of blood, there was a resistance, but she pushed past the resistance. She pushed past the people. She got through the crowd. We see it with the, with the lame man who was on the mat and there was a line at the door like at Disney World or Disneyland and they're like, okay, maybe we should just wait in line. No, they didn't say we're gonna wait in line. They said we're going to the roof and we're gonna dig a hole in it and we're gonna drop them down. When there's resistance, we're coming through. Say we're coming through. If you talk back to me, I won't yell so much. We're coming through. And then there's the woman, there's the woman, I love this, um, in Matthew chapter 15, that says, uh, in verse 21, leaving that place, we don't have it on the screen, but Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman came from the vicinity, 
He came, she came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I wasn't sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. And this is not the response I would expect for Jesus to give. Jesus says this, it is not right to take, is it not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs? Wait a second, Jesus, why would you say that to her? That sounds offensive. We do not offend people in church, okay? We are not an offensive church because we don't want to get canceled. We don't want to say anything that will get us canceled, okay? So Jesus, I don't know why you're saying that. Verse 27, she says this, her response to resistance is, yes, it is, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. See, when the resistance comes, that doesn't mean for you to stop actually that means for you to push even harder and then yes thank you he screams all the louder jesus have mercy on me see he was done begging in the back he was done living in the background he was done taking the handouts he's coming after jesus and then the bible says After he cries out the second time, Jesus says, call to him to come here. And that word call in the Greek is phoneo, which is where we get phone. You don't have to be a theologian to know that because there's just an O at the end, okay? Phone, O, phoneo, okay? And so it's where we get the word. But actually what the word phoneo means is to bid one, watch this, to quit one place and then to come to another. Not just, not just, hey, come over here. Not just call on the phone, say, hey, what's up? Let's talk about life. But to quit one place and to come to another. I think what this man Bartimaeus realized is that I have to let go of the former to get to the future. And what we have to realize is sometimes what's holding us back is holding on to the past, holding on to shame, holding on to condemnation, holding on to my comfort zone. And when we hold on to those things, what we're always going to do is we're always going to have one foot in the past and then one foot trying to inch to the future. And all you're going to end up doing is a spiritual split. Amen. You caught that illustration? It just came to me, you know. And I'm not going to do it in skinny jeans. And you don't want to do it in your spiritual life either. Phoneo, quit one place and come to another. In other words, Jesus was saying, Tell him to quit begging on the street and stop that way of life and come to another. If you want to move forward in your future, you have to let go of the past. You have to let go of something. You have to let go of some things. And then the Bible says that he threw his cloak off. He threw his cloak off. He wasn't wearing much under that. And he wasn't on a football pitch either. He wasn't streaking for fun. He threw his cloak off, but I believe this was a significant, a significant thing that took place because what he was really doing was he was saying, I'm throwing my old way of life off and I'm moving forward in my new way of life. And this is also significant of Jesus because the Bible says that he clothes us in righteousness. If you read the story of the prodigal son, he came with dirty, a dirty cloak. He came with dirty clothes. And the first thing, one of the first things the father did was is say, get him some clean clothes because God will always put a robe of righteousness on you when you move from the past into the future. He puts a robe of righteousness. That way we don't see the stains of the past. He doesn't see the stains of your failure. He doesn't see the stains of your sin. He sees Jesus. You see, it's all about Jesus. Sozo is all about Jesus. He puts a robe of righteousness on him. He throws off his cloak. I'm I'm throwing off. We got to be willing. I got to throw off my shame. I got to throw off my old self. I got to throw off my old identity. Why? Because he's the one who shapes my identity. He's the one who shapes who I am. He's the one who shapes my future. My future is not shaped by what my parents said I would do or what the teacher said I couldn't do or about my stature or about my ability, but my future is shaped by him and I've got to be willing to throw off the past so that I can move forward in the future. Amen. He threw his cloak off. And then, and then Jesus, 
And then Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? I remember, <clears throat> I remember when we, were, we would do something called a freedom conference and um, I was a part of the prayer team on the freedom conference and people would come forward for the freedom conference. And, um, and, and, and so people would, people would come forward and we were always, we were always instructed, listen, you, you, you may know what they're dealing with. You may know what the prayer is, but you still need to ask what they want prayer for. And I think, I think something, I think something was taking place here in the spirit because what Jesus was doing was, is he was asking, but what he was asking him to do was not to just say it, but he was asking him to reveal and to activate his faith by asking the question, what do you want me to do for you? The uh, Bartimaeus was at, in his response. I want to see. He was activating his faith to say, "I believe that it can be done," and that's why I'm standing in front of you, Jesus, is because I know that you can do it. Can I tell you? Just ask. Just ask. I'm gonna use my kids as an illustration again. My kids are always screaming at me, and I'm telling them, "Just ask. Just you just have to ask." I can't even hear what you're trying to say, begging in the back. I can't. I can't even hear what you're trying to say to me. You are screaming, you are raising your voice, you are mumbling. I do not know what you're saying. And I come and I come and I, and I get in their face when I'm being a good parent. The other days I just scream back at them. I'm not Jesus, you know? And I come to them and I say, listen, listen, what do you need? What do you need? And then it takes them a second, I take a breath and they say, I, I, I want some water, please. Actually they say, Fasam, it's sprudel, please. And I say, Okay, we can do that. You know, when you just ask, you just ask. Asking will activate your faith. Asking will activate, asking will activate that faith inside of you. John 14 says it this way, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things, say greater things, than these. Because I am going to the Father. And I will do, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me, he says it again, for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is glorious, my, she's the middle child now, poor girl. She already needed a lot of attention. And so she has this strategy. Megan or myself, I'm going to the store. I want to go. Ezra doesn't care. He wants to play. He, 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 Ezra hates going to the store, my oldest. Glory always says, I want to go. I want to go. And I'm trying to figure out my head, why do you want it? That's so boring going to the store, going to the store. But you know what she figured out was, if she goes to the store she has a better chance to ask for candy or a prize while she's at the store in front of it, when she's in proximity with her parent, when she's standing next to one of us and the cashier's looking, right? And, and mom and dad don't want the cashier to think that we're terrible parents and no, can't have that toy. She, she's figured it out. Hey, she's at the, she's at the cash register. Can I have this chocolate? Ugh. Of course, sweetheart. Of course. But if she stayed at home and she would have said, hey, do you think you could pick me up some chocolate? No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. But she knows when she's in proximity, when she's in proximity, when she's there, she knows that when she asks, it's gonna be done. Can I tell you, it's the, same, it's the same way with your relationship with Jesus. This is what Bartimaeus knew. If I, if I get in proximity to him, if I, if I stop begging in the back and I, and I just get to Jesus, my relationship with him, he's my father. And the Bible says that whatever we ask, he'll do in his name. And the Bible also says that he will give good gifts to his children. He'll give good gifts to his children. And, and if I'm just in proximity with my father and I just ask, just ask. And sometimes we don't ask big enough. Sometimes we don't ask big enough. I think I, I'm not going to tell my daughter this until she's old enough to afford things on her own or until she's married a rich man. 
I'm not going to tell her this, but if she just bats her eyes the right way, smiles at me and says the right words, I'll give her more than chocolate. Can I have a bike? Sure. Can I have a dog? Yes. Can I have a unicorn? Of course they exist. I will find it. Come on, this is what your heavenly father does. He says, listen, you just got to ask. You so, so, sometimes we overcomplicate things and we think, we think God will do a miracle in my life if I, if, I, if I stay on my knees long enough and I have at least an hour of prayer and if I, if I do this. But, some, but, but asking, just asking activates my faith and it's faith. Every time Jesus heals, so often he says, it's your faith that's healed you. It's your faith that sozoed you. It's your, it's your faith that saved you. It's your faith. It's your, it's your faith. Woman, it's your, it's your faith. Woman with the issue of blood, it's your faith. Uh, Bartimaeus, it was, your, it was your faith that healed you. Because Jesus is the, one, is the source where everything, where sozo is found, but it is my faith that connects with the source. This, this plug here has power in it, but it's going, for, it's going to take me faith to plug something into it. It is my faith that plugs into the power that God has. It takes me to ask. And sometimes we don't ask because we don't have a big enough faith. Stop begging from the back. It's my proximity to him. It's, 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 when I, it's when I approach, the Bible says, approach the throne of God with boldness and confidence. Approach him with boldness and confidence. Jesus, I ask you to do the impossible because I can't do the impossible. I only have this small sphere of ability, but God, you are the God of the impossible. I ask you to save this nation in Jesus. Why don't we just ask for big things? I ask you, Jesus, to every time we come into this keynote for somebody to give their life to Jesus. I ask Jesus for every time we come in here for there to be miracle signs and wonders. I ask Jesus that it doesn't stop here, that it goes out into the streets. God, I ask right now in Jesus' name that whatever, whenever, whenever the church, the body of Christ goes into the street, goes into Kaufland, goes into Etika or Aldi, or goes into the next meeting that you are present and you do signs and wonders. That it would be an employee that says, oh man, I can't make it to the meeting today because I have a migraine. Oh, let me pray for you. Jesus, heal this migraine. And God, that you would do miracles, signs and wonders in our midst because we ask, because we ask. God, we're asking you today to do miracles, signs, wonders, that we would believe for the impossible and that whatever we ask in your name you do God I pray I pray right now that our questions that are asking would be lined up with the will of heaven I pray this morning that God whatever whatever needs God whatever whatever is taking place in the body God, we, we, we would, would be sorted in Jesus' name. God, right now, we just thank you. God, we ask. I, I, maybe we've been too afraid to ask. Maybe we've been too afraid to ask because it would, it would seem silly. We just ask for coronavirus to be eradicated in Jesus' name. We're kind of ready to go to restaurants. If you haven't seen, we ask for it to be eradicated because you're the name above all names. You're the king above all kings. You're the Lord of Lords. God, we, ex we, we ask right now in Jesus' name for, for growth. I just, I just pray for the churches in the region. Not, not, not just Destiny Church, I pray for the church in the region right now. God, I pray there wouldn't be buildings to hold the church. God, I pray there wouldn't be, I pray there wouldn't be venues big enough to hold the church. I pray that we would have a good problem in the body of Christ, trying to find places to meet, trying to find places to gather, trying to find places to worship together. We thank you for that. God, we pray for revival right here 
in Nuremberg region. We pray for revival in people's lives. We pray, we pray for a revival that would spread across nations, across the globe. We pray for missionaries not to come, but to go. We pray for missionaries to be sent across the globe from this place in Jesus' name. God, we pray that it would be an unprecedented and unexplainable move of people being sent out. Can you stand to your feet with me, church? Whatever, whatever you're asking for, just ask. God, we ask right now. We ask in Jesus' name that you would do what only you can do. We ask in Jesus' name. We thank you that you're present. Where two or more are gathered, you are there in their midst and that you are present. God, we're coming after you, Jesus. We're pushing past the resistance. We're breaking past the resistance and we're coming to the throne of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, can we give God a hand clap of praise this morning? He alone, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.